All right, welcome everyone. Have an epic webinar today and we have a huge audience joining us. So I am really, really excited. Um, the topic today, we are going over winter portrait lifestyle and sports photography. And um, it's February, so it is a um, winter wonderland out there through most, most of the country. And uh, I know a lot of you photographers around the world want to create epic imagery year round. So I think it's important to develop content at a really high end level, even in the snow. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Some tips, some tactics, some strategies, some secret strategies of how to photograph absolutely spectacular portrait uh, and lifestyle imagery, as well as sports photography in the snow. It's a difficult type of environment to photograph in. And you know, for somebody like myself, um, you know, I grew up uh, I'm Kevin Michael Schmitz. I'm a celebrity fashion advertising photographer, but I grew up in rural West Michigan in a winter wonderland where there's tons of snow and it gets down to ridiculously cold temperatures. Um, and I'm accustomed to that. I'm accustomed to going outside and photographing in the snow and creating amazing imagery. Uh, now I live in Southern California, but I also, you know, get out to places like I was just in the Swiss Alps uh, photographing at the Matterhorn. Um, over uh, about a month and a half ago or so. And I'm also um, gonna be conducting an epic photographic workshop up in the mountains in, um, in the uh, Denver area. So out near Denver, we're gonna be photographing up in the mountains near the Breckenridge Fair Play area and creating some amazing content in two weeks. So I thought that, you know, this is gonna be a really relevant time because a lot of you are going through some major snow uh, freezes around the country and uh, need to create some imagery for your clients. And you don't all have uh, the benefit of staying warm and toasty in a studio or an amazing, awesome indoor location. So how to photograph outside in a winter wonderland. And that's going to be kind of the, you know, the topic of today. I'm also, in addition to myself, I'm bringing on some expert panelists, um, including some amazing photographers, uh, that also live in places like Colorado uh, and um, and elsewhere where they they are going to be photographing um, in some you know snowy areas uh, where they have some really awesome strategies and things that I even um, you know want to learn about because I find uh, you know it's it's really great to learn from all different types of photographers about how to master um, master winter photography. So as you guys join, um, I'd love for you guys to. Um, uh, to ask questions in the Q&A section. Um, there's the Q&A section, there's also the chat. Um, but uh, most importantly, um, I'd love for you guys to, uh, to ask the questions in the Q&A. That way we can get to each and every one of you if we can. Um, and that way we don't have to um, uh, miss anything. Uh, but I wanna make sure you guys do get your questions answered because this is all live. And I wanna make sure that uh, each and every one of you, um, you know, if you have some some strategies that you want to learn, some tips that you want to know about. Uh, I'd love to answer your questions and go in depth about that with um, each and every one of you. And we usually get to most of your questions uh, throughout these amazing webinars. So um, as you guys join, um, please uh, make sure to answer those, uh, ask those questions in the Q&A. Um, and I'm going to be um, uh, right now, of course, uh, adding some of my amazing panelists as they jump on. We've got the great Rami Vermigulo uh, from Colorado. Uh, we have uh, the amazing Priscilla Evans, who's Australian, but lives here in California. Uh, we have the great Dan Rothschild, who um, is uh, also from like the St. Louis area, but um, he now lives in Orange County, California. Um, the Amer amazing Kara Katzen, who um, she's also, uh, she actually lives in the St. Louis area and she's going to come on. She's also a professional photographer, uh, photographs a lot of children and families and such. And she's going to give some amazing strategies of um, what to do in like a one winter wonderland. We also have uh, the great Shauna Shanti, uh, who's in New York uh, in a really, really cold climate and um, has been filming pretty regularly on production um, and uh, he, he does both filming and photography. So he's gonna be giving you guys um, his perspective as well. So um, it's, uh, it's gonna be a really amazing uh, webinar today. And I wanted to um, also ask you guys uh, some questions myself because I want you guys to ask me some questions. Um, but I also, I kind of wanna know, you know, what type of photographic industry you guys are in. 
because uh, I know we have a lot of people on here that are interested in portrait photography. Uh, so I want to know, you know, you guys into portraits, weddings, corporate events, um, fine art, travel, fashion, swim, product, uh, food and beverage. You guys are just hobbyists. Um, you know, please uh, let me know. Let me know what it is that you guys do. Uh, I always love to know this so that I can tailor these amazing webinars directly to each and every one of you. So, um, so as you guys are all jumping on, I know that um, there's a huge audience right now, but there's going to be a lot more jumping on over the next like um, a few minutes here. I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about, um, I guess, what it means to photograph in a winter wonderland. Now, to me, I think that what I see all the time with photographers is that a lot of photographers, they run into this, you know, aspect of, hey, um, I, I live in this area of Florida, or I live in, you know, Kansas, or I live in California, or I live in Boston, New York, whichever, and I'm going to, you know, go after those type of clients. And what happens is, is a lot of photographers, they get pigeonholed, they get pigeonholed into photographing uh, just what that client is looking for, and maybe just what is in that local area. Now, while that can be good for some clients, um, it kind of negates you and gives you, it doesn't allow you the opportunity to photograph for higher tier clients. It doesn't allow you to be a national brand. And, um, and I know that later on, we're gonna have um, Daniel Rothschild and um, Priscilla Evans talking about this a little bit more in depth, but I wanna make sure that you guys realize we don't have to be secluded to just our area of where we photograph. You know, I personally live on the beach in Hermosa Beach, but I photograph in Denver for advertising campaigns. In fact, um, the great Chad Chisholm, who has attended like four of our workshops, him and I are meeting with an advertising um, agency client uh, with a major hotel brand uh, on um, uh, March 8th. And we're talking about a major uh, advertising campaign that we're going to be photographing for a resort hotel, both photographing, doing video, and also doing the media by for. So I'm going to be doing that in Colorado. I have a lot of clients in New York. I have clients in Florida, in Chicago. Um, I'm going to be actually spending a lot of time in Europe and most likely going to be photographing for a lot of clients out of Paris um, because I actually just bought a 49 room castle in France which is covered in snow. And I'm gonna be photographing there um, in about a month where um, I'm actually flying to France and I'm gonna be photographing in the winter wonderland there as well. So um, I wanna make sure that um, uh, you guys realize that you don't have to be secluded to just where you live. You can create a national brand. But what that takes is a body of work that is national a body of work, a body of your photography that doesn't just showcase that, hey, Kevin Michael Schmitz is a Southern California photographer. I wanna showcase a brand where I'm a national photographer, in fact, an international photographer. And I don't see any reason why each and every one of you shouldn't do that as well. In fact, one of the things that I did is early on in my career, I mean, I did my bachelor's and my MFA to be a professor of photography. And I realized I grew up in rural West Michigan. I did my degree in photography. I went for my MFA in photography at the Academy of Art San Francisco. And even in San Francisco, which is not a major market, it's a smaller market um, considering advertising level, I created a brand that was national. I had brand of winter wonderland photography to showcase that I was a winter photographer and I could photograph. But I also had a brand of Southern California photography and New York photography and Chicago photography and Miami photography. So I actually, you know, just as a tip out there for you guys, um, you know, even if you live in a, you know, in a rural area or whatever, I think you should create a national brand, including winter photography. And you should also have phone numbers that represent where you want to be seen. So for instance, even my photographers that live in the Denver area, like Ramey and Chad Chisholm and Randy Perietti and many of you guys that are on right now on this webinar, I've coached you to also have phone numbers for other cities. Like for instance, even when I lived in San Francisco, I had a phone number in Los Angeles, I had a phone number in New York, and then I had a phone number in San Francisco. So when I'd send out a promo mailer to my clients, they felt like I'm an LA, New York, San Francisco photographer and I was 23 years old. So just having that, and it's easy to do, it's even free. I just created a Google Voice number for my New York, um, or my LA number and then New York number. I think I had like a magic jack at the time. Um, and it was basically free to have two numbers that both transferred into my San Francisco number. You guys could all do that as well. 
So I think that's one strategy to become more of a national brand. Now, when it comes to winter photography, because that's what this is going to be about, whether you guys are shooting portraiture, whether you're shooting weddings, whether you're shooting lifestyle, I think that it's important to think about, okay, if I'm going to create winter photography, um, what, let's talk about what we can do to make the winter really showcase. And what I mean by that is not just go outside, but I want to also get involved with the snow, right? So, you know, you guys probably saw the, you know, the, the promo mailer that I'd sent out about, you know, about this, this webinar and it had, you know, showcased a scene with, you know, a family scene having a snowball fight, this scene. Now, a scene like this, dynamic, right? And what's interesting about this, I actually uh, directed and photographed this and filmed it at our uh, last Denver uh, Winter Wonderland photography workshop up in the mountains near Breckenridge. We had a multi-million dollar log cabin mansion estate. We photographed with all these top models and uh, we created this really dynamic scene, which we art directed, we storyboarded, and then we coached the talent into the scenario. And you can do this for portrait photography, wedding photography, or lifestyle photography. And I created this moment and I had these kids racing around and having snowball fights and, and it was real. It was actually authentic. I had the kids like they were getting sopping wet. They were laughing and smiling. They were throwing snowballs at each other. But also, as you can see, it was a sunny day. So it wasn't actually snowing out. But I wanted to make it look like it was. So we were throwing snow up in the air, had the kids like you know, patting it with their hands. We had them throwing, like literally physically hitting each other with the snow and then jumping up and down on snow banks. And it kind of gave that illusion of like, wow, it looks like it's a snow day. And this family went outside to play and they're having a grand time. And what's interesting about an image like this is that it showcases a scene where it almost feels like I'm inside of the scene with the models. And that's really important, especially if it's a winter scene, because it doesn't, you, you don't want it to be like you're outside looking in. You want to feel like you're there. You want to feel like you are there with the models. You want to be there as it's happening. And I think that's really important. So I want you guys to, to really feel that, feel that moment of that occurring. So when you're shooting winter lifestyle, I want you guys to think about, okay, if I'm going to create a winter story, how can I make it feel like the audience is involved? How can I make it feel like I am inside of the scene with the, image, with, with the talent, with the models? And, and so I, I, I try to make it as dynamic as possible. I try to make it as, as much motion and movement and energy as possible. And, and I think that as portrait photographers, I think that's where most of you guys could really benefit is to create action sequences, movement, and emotion, not just capturing somebody sitting there, you know, and just being photographed, but creating a moment where it feels like it's just, you know, like you're inside of that scene where all this stuff is happening and it's exciting and energizing. And that's how I want you guys to feel. I want you to want the viewer to feel that way. And I can tell you what, when you start creating content like that for your clients, even if they're clients that are just portrait clients, they're oftentimes going to be a lot more excited about the content. They're going to be way more engaged. They're going to want to buy bigger packages. They're going to feel like you're a more high tier photographer. Okay. So I want you guys to think about that. I want you guys to think about, okay, what can I do for my clients that are going to just completely wow and dazzle them and get them really, really, really excited. Okay. That's really important to me. So I want you guys to think about that. I also want to, to, to I'm going to add, conduct another poll here, and I want to know kind of like what's holding you guys back right now. Now, this could be, you know, most of you guys have goals, right? It could be a photographic goal. It could be, hey, I want to get better winter lifestyle photography. It might be a financial goal. I want to make more money this winter, and I want to create great content that's going to wow and dazzle my clients. Um, whether you're into winter sports, whether you're into lifestyle photography and advertising, whether you're into portrait photography or weddings, whatever. Um, is it about your portfolio? Do you have content like this in your portfolio? You know, and if you don't, that's okay. We can build it. But the challenge that a lot of you guys have is it's cold outside and also production's difficult to do, especially with lighting and, you know, all kinds of dynamic scenes um, and creating these moments. Um, but, you know, I think that it's very doable. And it just takes a little bit of planning 
and production. Okay, so I'm going to showcase you guys uh, to you guys a few images um, that I find really interesting that are you know, an image like this, and this is exactly literally what we're going to be shooting at the Denver workshop um, in a few weeks, uh, literally in two weeks, we're going to be um, going there and I've got world class top stylists. Um, I've got world class top models, I even have model flying in from Miami for this epic experience, and we're going to be photographing up in the mountains and creating these dynamic scenes, but telling stories. And you notice that like, as you look through here, there's feeling to it, right? There's emotion. Even something like this, you know, it's kind of has that whole sports, it is, you know, this could be a professional snowboarder, it could be a portrait photo photograph of a client that, you know, maybe she's doing her senior pictures, you know, or maybe she's doing a portrait and she wants to have really feature her snowboard. But you notice how I'm lighting this, I'm lighting this backlit. And I'm doing that very intentionally because you know what, when we're shooting out in the snow, first of all, we have a lot of light coming in from the snow and it's popping back up. So there's a lot of reflectance, but I have a huge affinity to backlighting scenes, creating scenes where they're backlit and creating moments. If you have that opportunity, if it's not cloudy outside where you creates that sense of nostalgia and that moment with the backlighting and all of that lens flare. And to me, that's what gets me really, really excited. So a scene like this, I love it. And to light this, what I used with a giant bounce reflector, I think we had like an eight by eight foot bounce reflector bouncing in off of the sun back into her and creating a really natural feel and also allowing her to move in and out and about so that we could not only photograph her, but we could film her as well. Right, um, a sequence like this. This was also shot at the workshop, um, the last last workshop we did at the in the Winter Wonderland in um, in Denver, like we're doing in two weeks. And having wardrobe like this, this is this is key. Now you can see this like epic log cabin mansion estate in the background. You can see the snowy trees, and it has that beautiful Winter Wonderland feel. But also the talent is dressed in an amazing, beautiful, beautifully um, uh, directed as far as artistically uh, wardrobe. You know, she's all very, very well um, uh, dressed as far as wardrobe styling, the fashion styling on this is impeccable. So making sure that also not only are clients and your, or your models warm, but they're also dressed appropriately. So we use a professional wardrobe stylist that pulled from all these uh, winter designers and brands. But I love something like this. And even though it wasn't technically snowing, we were literally picking up like piles of snow throwing them into the air and allowing the snow to come down to kind of give an illusion like she's walking around in the snow. So that's one way to do it. Um, I think I even had like a, um, an assistant on the side with like a shovel, like a snow shovel, um, shoveling snow and kind of whipping it over us right in front of my lens. And it created that kind of moment. Um, you know, same thing here. We did exactly the same thing. It was not snowing, but we created the illusion of it snowing. You know, here's also, this is a great opportunity for both like kind of lifestyle as well as a portrait kind of scenario. And, you know, and, and I love something like this because you're shooting in a, in a very, like we call this open shade where they're under an overhang, but there's this beautiful natural light coming in from the right side here and creating this gorgeous ambient, beautiful light um, that just is absolutely magical and it illuminates um, the characters here. Um, and if you notice, the hair and the makeup is incredible. In fact, we booked the same hair and makeup artist um, this time, uh, who's going to be absolutely amazing. So um, absolutely uh, dynamic scenarios. And that's why uh, I want each and every one of you guys to create really dynamic scenes. Um, that's, what I'm, that's, that's what I'm really looking for. And I think it's really important. You know, moments like this, again, it was not snowing, but we created the illusion of the snow by taking like shovels and picking up snow and tossing it over. And we, we use props like this vintage sled. Um, we had them all dressed, we had the pigtails. I mean, it just has that feeling to it. I absolutely love this scene. This was photographed by one of the photographers at that last workshop that we did on Winter Wonderland. And this one as well, you know, where we just had her just playing in the snow and having fun. And I recommend that guys, because even if you are a sports photographer and you're photographing Winter Wonderland sports, it doesn't just have to be them in the moment of like doing a you know crazy 1080 on a snowboard jump or doing you know a helicopter on a you know ski jump or something. But the real moments that a lot of the brands are looking for, especially the the, the clothing brands like Marmot or North Face or um, you know any brand that is affiliated or even Oakley, they want to see the moments. And this is a moment. 
I love this scene. I find this amazing. This was also shot at the workshop. You know, something like this, as well as this, everybody in sequence having fun. And then we have our silent moments. And this is also something where if, even though it is winter photography, feel free to have winter indoors too. You know, having that moment by the fire, sipping hot cocoa, being wrapped in, you know, in a warm, fuzzy um, blanket and having, you know, all dressed up in warm, fuzzy clothes. I love this scene, creating this dynamic moment where we can also, even if it is a winter wonderland and cold outside, we can come inside and create dynamic um, portraiture or lifestyle scenes. And uh, the way this was lit was with a giant eight by eight foot bounce. Now, of course, I have all the lighting at my disposal, all my you know, my pro photo equipment, we have all of it, right? I, I bring in, I typically bring in about $100,000 of lighting equipment to all my photo shoots from pro photo. But I'd much prefer when we're shooting lifestyle and portraiture, I much prefer giant bounces. That's how I'm getting this effect. That's how I'm getting this natural and gorgeous effect. Even a sequence like this, it wasn't even snowing. This was just all straight um, photographing with adding snow by having my assistant throwing snow into the scene. But it looks real. It looks real. And it creates these epic moments. So I want you guys to start thinking about when you are creating dynamic winter scenes, what can we do to make it have that feeling that the client is going to be like, oh my gosh, like this photographer gets it. This photographer, I want to work with them. This photographer, I am so excited because Something like this is going to wow and dazzle my clients and get them so excited because you've now added value and you've created a scene even in a difficult condition. Because shooting in the snow is not easy. It's a tough thing to do. And I know a lot of you guys, you know, it's, it's cold outside. It's, it's very difficult to go out and get people to, <laughs> to, to be assistants or, to, or if it's your family, if you want somebody to volunteer to be your assistant out and it's, you know, maybe it's 10 degrees outside. That's not easy to do. That's not easy to do. But I want to make sure that you guys are thinking about what does it take to get amazing, amazing photography. Now, I think that um, uh, now one of the things is also um, developing that epic portfolio. Now, I'm going to also be launching a poll here, guys, and I'd love for you guys to all answer. Um, now, we just finished our Newport Beach workshop literally like last week. And it was the most mind-blowing workshop that I've ever directed in lifestyle. Um, we shot with alpacas. We photographed with, um, I mean, this was a very like, I mean, even though it's the dead of winter, we got to shoot in Newport Beach in California and create this spectacular um, lifestyle with a California lifestyle and shoot with alpacas um, out at um, these amazing multi-million dollar locations and at top, top models in a diverse scene and creating this super dynamic scene. And by the way, shooting with alpacas was one of the most difficult animals I've ever got to photograph with. And I've shot with 500 pound live tigers. I photographed with horses. I photographed with all different types of, of animals you could think of. Um, but alpacas were so challenging, but beautiful to photograph. Absolutely breathtaking. I love these animals and they were so much fun, even though they're constantly rearing up and kind of like bucking. They were rearing, they were um, spitting, they were being very difficult on set, but we created amazing scenes nonetheless. And, um, and I love this scene. It was gorgeous. And for those of you guys out there that are also into not just winter wonderland photography or lifestyle photography or portrait photography, but, you know, those of you out there that also, um, you know, get into doing that, like I have a lot of photographers like Rami Vermigulo, for instance, who's going to be one of our first panelists here, who really loves the whole like farm fresh stuff. She's really into, you know, not only lifestyle and portrait photography, but she also does a lot of stuff for like restaurants and food and beverage and things like that. And what's really cool is um, we also film at each and every one of our photographic workshops. And this was actually at our Newport Beach workshop. Um, and uh, this was something that we shot with all 8K cinema cameras. We're gonna be doing something very similar to this out in the snow in two weeks in uh, up in the mountains up at 10,000 feet um, in Colorado. But this one we shot um, just like three days ago. Um, at Tanaka Farms in um, the Newport Beach, Irvine area. And we photographed um, and filmed with this strawberry farm. We had Blackberry Farm area. We shot with um, 
Uh, we photographed with alpacas out at the farm. We photographed with sugarcane. We photographed with and filmed with um, horses. We actually, on this day, um, on day four, which was our, and by the way, each workshop we do is a four day workshop and it keeps building and getting more and more and more incredible as each day passes. And uh, day three, you know, for instance, day one, we're just getting our feet wet and shooting. Day two, we're shooting a massive scale production at a multi million dollar estate with top supermodels. Day three, even better. We're photographing with alpacas and we're shooting, we shot seven models on day three. And then we, and on day four, we also shot at Tanaka Farms with horses, with this whole like farm fresh kind of feel. And it was amazing. So just imagine what we're gonna be doing like this in the snow, creating dynamic scenes. And by the way, right now guys, video is hot. Creating video content like this, all in, this was an 8K camera. Um, I think all of it was shot in slow-mo at 4K. And um, we shot this with um, a uh, 8K red cinema camera as well as a, a Canon R5 on a gimbal. And it was amazing. Creating really, really dynamic sequences. And, um, and this is all content that each and every one of our photographers that attended gets access to, because this is theirs, which is pretty epic. And by the way, guys, even though this Newport Beach workshop just passed, uh, we have another one coming up in um, uh, in February uh, of 2022. So if you guys are interested in that, I know I have a poll going, but please let me know if you guys are interested in one of those, whether it's Newport, whether you're interested in the Winter Wonderland experience in Denver, which is in two weeks, um, which, uh, you know, I know the topic of this webinar is all about Winter Wonderland photography, uh, but it looks like as these results are coming in, most of you guys are interested in coming to Napa Valley. Uh, most of you guys are interested in coming to Miami Beach getting out of the snow and getting into the warmth, um, which is awesome as well. But uh, creating great content like this, um, I encourage you to also do this in the snow. Because creating great content in the snow is going to be really hot for resorts, really hot for advertising agencies, really hot for a lot of brands that want stuff that is going to give you that, that national feel. And now that the photographers have just attended this Newport experience last week, have this content in their book, now it's the best opportunity to add national brand, have Winter Wonderland, which we're gonna be doing in two weeks, then having Miami Beach in April, then creating content in Chicago um, with a very Midwest feel, and then in New York with that epic New York fashion feel. So having content around the country, I think is super important. So if you guys haven't answered the poll yet, please answer now. Let me know of any of the experiences that we have coming up um, from whether it's Winter Wonderland, whether it's um, Newport Beach, we have an experience on cracked earth out in the desert in Las Vegas, which is gonna be absolutely mind blowing. I think we only have one spot left in that one. Um, we have um, the Denver workshop. This is kind of the last chance to do it before that one um, closes up because it's happening in like two weeks. Uh, but we also have Napa Valley. We have an epic uh, wedding photography workshop where we're shooting um, up in the Napa area and we're creating amazing content on uh, wedding and portrait photography. So, um, so if you guys are interested in any of these amazing experiences, definitely set up a consult with one of our team and get involved before um, it's completely sold out because our Newport Beach workshop was sold out. And those of you guys who just attended, I mean, it was a very busy workshop. We had a waiting list and we had so many photographers that had just an amazing experience. But this is the upcoming one in Denver. And by the way, we're going to be specializing in this winter wonderland photography. We're going to give you that opportunity to shoot at a sixty to hundred thousand dollar a day budget production with top models from the top agencies. We're going to be working with world class celebrity stylists. We're going to be shooting with incredible production and all kinds of incredible props. And we even have some really cool surprises for you guys um, with. Um, with animals as well. So I'm, I'm really excited and I feel like we are pulling out all the stops to make this the most epic winter wonderland photographic workshop we have ever done. And it's gonna be perfect for those of you who are portrait photographers that wanna get high-end winter portrait photography. For those of you who are lifestyle advertising photographers, for those of you who are resort photographers, as well as photographers that, um, uh, that you know, do weddings, um, anything out in the snow, um, where you know you have a client that might ever want that or you want to showcase a national brand, this workshop experience is going to be absolutely mind-blowing. It's a four-day workshop and you're going to be shooting for all four days. 
creating the most epic content imaginable and walking on set of a hundred thousand dollar a day production. So um, this one's going to be insane. So if you guys are interested, um, let me know. And um, we also, um, you know, after that, of course, the most really popular workshops uh, are, of course, the um, the amazing Miami Beach experience. Which, for those of you guys who are cold in the snow right now, um, you know, I completely understand. But having an experience uh, where we're out on the beach, this was shot in Key Largo at our um, Miami Beach workshop last year with supermodels. And if you guys do wanna get out of the whole winter wonderland thing and you wanna to get to the beach, we have this experience where this is in Miami. Um, I think this one has, we only allow 12 photographers. We have 11 photographers signed up for this. So there's one spot left in Miami Beach. Um, but uh, this is pretty spectacular. Um, and I'm excited because me personally, this is probably one of my absolute favorite um, workshops that we do each year. So if you guys are interested, please let us know and um, get involved uh, if you want to take your photographic portfolio to the next level. Because I know many of you guys on the, the poll you answered the question saying that it was your portfolio development that's the most critical thing for you right now. And if that's the case, we need to create content that's going to completely blow away your clients. Clients, you know, the imagery and content that is just going to be unparalleled with quality. So, so start thinking about that, you guys. Now, um, in regards to winter wonderland photography, because that's the topic of today, um, I want to make sure that you guys start to think about, okay, if I'm going to art direct a scene and I'm going to have it in the winter and it's going to be outside, how do we actually put something like that together? Okay, first of all, producing. One of the first and foremost things is having the right wardrobe. And for me, that's like literally step one, even before a location, even before my models or talent, or if I'm shooting for a portrait client or something like that, I want to find an amazing stylist. Um, and if you guys do shoot for portrait clients or wedding clients and things like that, uh, obviously it's a lot more difficult because you're dealing with them directly. But if there is any way or any budget to get a wardrobe stylist in, oh my gosh, it'll change everything. If you guys are advertising photographers or you have any interest in commercial photography, shooting you can you see the content that we're shooting and how amazing that is well it's because we have high-end styling it's because the styling is absolutely on point it's because the the look and the feel of the wardrobe and the propping is over the top and we have content that blows you away so you want to make sure that you get content that's going to have that high-end styled feel with world-class brands um, that you have uh, color coordination, and you have um, apparel that's not only going to be comfortable, but also it's going to look really great on camera. So all, step one is get amazing wardrobe styles. And I work with some incredible ones in each city. I've got an amazing one in Denver. I work, I've got incredible celebrity stylists in LA, New York, Miami, Chicago, all over the place. And if you guys want to work with stylists, the best opportunity is you've got to build a relationship with them because they're not going to just work with you out of the blue, unless the budget's insane. So average wardrobe stylist is about $2,000 a day um, to style. And then it's another, usually at least a half day, um, one to two half days on the beginning to prep the clothes, pull the clothes from showrooms and such, um, or department stores, and then another half day on the return. So a typical wardrobe stylist, um, you know, on a one day shoot, you know, might cost you about $5,000 or so. So it's expensive. Obviously, we don't always have that luxury, but if you do have a commercial client, you've got to have content that's going to appeal to them, okay? You've got to have world-class top styling, and it's a lot harder than you might think. Um, at this last experience, this last workshop that I just did last week that you guys got to see this, this imagery and video of, um, I spent $20,000 out of my pocket. And I literally just put it on my credit card, and I bought $20,000 in wardrobe, and I had it mailed in so that my stylist could then style the models on set. And you know what was crazy? I didn't even have enough. I had to send my stylist out. Now it was four days of shooting, so it was a lot of outfits, but I had to send my stylist out to buy another $2,000 worth of clothing at Free People um, on like day two of the, the production um, because I just didn't, I needed more. And, um, and of course, it doesn't cost me anything, guys. I take that $20,000 in wardrobe, I wear, you know, the models wear it, we shoot with it, and then we just box it up and mail it back. And if you make sure that you have a free 30-day return policy, which a lot of companies do, it's easy. Um, I recommend using a lot of department stores like Bloomingdale's or Macy's or 
um, you know, Saks. And there's a lot of um, major department stores that'll do this and are very generous. Or a company like Belk, which is big in the South, but Belk, um, they have a 180 day return policy. Like that's insane, you know? So it makes it really easy for us. Um, you know, certain brands are a lot trickier, like free people, um, you know, brands like that are a lot more tricky on the return policy. So you have to be a lot more careful, but I, I do this every shoot I do, I buy all my wardrobe and then I, um, you know, we wear it for the shoot and then return it. So wardrobe is going to be critical. And of course, if it's winter, we need to have the right winter apparel, the winter jackets, the winter purses, winter. And, you know, and I, I like to have a sense of style with it, which is like what we're going to be doing in, in, in Denver. Now we also have to have world-class hair and makeup and hair and makeup. If you don't have great hair and makeup, you know, the models aren't going to look right. And of course you can always fix it and post sometimes in photography, you can't fix it in video and video is going to be absolutely critical to have amazing, amazing hair and makeup. So think about that guys. Um, and making sure that the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe is on point. And even if you're shooting portraits, you still, you want to make sure that you have great hair, makeup, and wardrobe. Okay, so start thinking about that. And if it's a portrait client that doesn't want, obviously doesn't have a budget for that for wardrobe styles, then at least get them to buy and return some stuff. So it's on their dime, you know, or maybe you'll have to, but making sure that obviously, you know, the clothes stay clean and you can return it, but making sure the wardrobe's key. All these little details, they add up to this amazing production. Absolutely amazing production. And especially in the snow, if we're gonna be doing something like that. We're not gonna be pulling from showrooms. Generally, we're gonna be pulling from department stores and brands like Dick's Sporting Goods and stuff like that, where they have you know winter jackets and stuff like that. Just make sure to leave the tags on because that's really, really, really important. By the way, guys, I, I just wanna make a comment here on our um, poll results. It looks like the majority of you all are interested in the Napa Valley workshop on wedding and portrait photography, um, which is fantastic. That's gonna be an epic experience. Um, it's coming up um, in May. And, um, and it's, uh, it's going to be an amazing experience. And it's going to be actually our first workshop in 12 years. Uh, we were traditional for high-end fashion lifestyle. This is going to be our first and dedicated high-end workshop on high-end wedding and portrait photography. So I'm really, really, really excited about that. It's going to be absolutely epic. Um, and by the way, guys, if you are interested in anything that we're talking about and you want to have like a dedicated one-on-one uh, -on -one strategy session about winter wonderland photography, developing your portfolio, um, or if you're interested in enrolling in one of our workshops, um, in the chat, there's a link to set up a dedicated one-on-one -on -one Zoom session with somebody from my elite team, our epic photographic consultants, Daniel Rothschild, Priscilla Evans, Kara Katzen, Shauna Shanti, and they can get on with you personally and coach you and guide you and um, I think it's a really great opportunity. Mo many of you guys have done this that are on right now, but if you haven't, now is an amazing opportunity uh, to jump on. So make sure to click on that link and, um, and jump on and, uh, and set up a time that works for you. I recommend though, the sooner the better because um, in about a week and a half, we're gonna be traveling and we're gonna be shooting up in the mountains and we're not gonna, and most of my team is flying in. So um, we, uh, we'll, we'll have kind of a dedicated time this week and now is, now is really the best time um, to talk and to connect. So um, please uh, jump on and do one of those. Um, all right, guys. So the next facet with winter lifestyle photography um, is um, if you are gonna be shooting, so we talked about wardrobe, we talked about hair, we talked about makeup. Um, but another thing is, um, is if we are, if it isn't just portrait photography, we're shooting lifestyle, we're shooting sports, um, I also want to make sure, you guys, that we are um, create, getting really, really great, fantastic talent, okay? That is so critical. Now, when I say talent, that means generally models, um, and, uh, you know, but if it's going to be, um, uh, um, sometimes it is talent because maybe we are shooting like a, say, a professional snowboarder um, or a professional skier or something like that if it's in a winter wonderland scenario. And that's awesome too. You know, if you're shooting Sean White or something, that would be considered the talent. Um, but if we're going to be photographing generally for our portfolio, I want to make sure, even if you guys are portrait photographers, I want to make sure that you are getting really incredible models. Okay. Because we don't want to just show our clients on our website because, you know, not all clients are going to be that aesthetic that 
you want to showcase because not all of your clients are going to look like the cover of magazines, but I know that you want um, your photography to look to be on the cover of magazines or at least appear to be. Um, so if that's the case, let's develop content that can be on the cover of magazines. And to do that, we have to have professional models. So let's definitely cast top tier models. Now, I think it's really, really important, you guys, to, um, you know, to, to when you are casting models, don't just cast somebody from Model Mayhem or somebody that you know. I wanna make sure that you guys are also casting real professional models. And I'm talking top tier A-list models from major modeling agencies. You know, for instance, like this big production that I just did last week where I was showing you that video, we cast models from LA models. Um, we had um, Next models. Uh, we had Aston. We had industry models. We had, um, I, I you know reached out to Ford. I had Elite, um, uh, Wilhelmina, all the biggest modeling agencies. Um, and I was able to cast from, I mean, I think we, we worked with 15 different modeling agencies. And then we did our final, final selections from like four different agencies and booked a whole cast. And we probably shot with like, I don't know, 14 different models throughout the week and um, from top, top agencies. So this was a world-class, massive scale production. But what, what made it special was the level of talent, the level of quality of the models that we got to shoot. And that made it spectacular. And that will make your portfolio spectacular if you can create images with world-class top models. It makes all the difference in the world. Um, and, and, you know, not just young adult, beautiful, you know, models, but also child models. Um, you know, if you're shooting, you want you shoot adult or mature models, definitely make sure that you have professional mature models. Um, now, this is a sequence where we shot, this is straight out of camera, um, not even retouched yet, but we shot with an alpaca and we shot with a top professional model, Kara uh, Salek from a top agency um, in LA. And um, we shot um, this in, in front of the sugar cane. Um, at Tanaka, it was amazing. This was just shot like, I don't know, four days ago, five days ago, it was incredible. And um, absolutely beautiful, shot with that beautiful evening light. So I usually have my two options. I'm gonna be shooting either backlit or I'm gonna be shooting where it's have that nice direct evening light at golden hour, um, whether we're doing winter stuff or even summer stuff like that. Um, but, uh, th but I just wanna show that designation as working with top tier models is absolutely key and critical. Um, and then creating dynamic scenes where we can create these moments that, you know, that get animated and get active and get excited and get the energy out of the models, you know, and get these kind of sequences. Like, for instance, this is a scene with child models that we just shot last week, lifestyle scene. We're going to be doing something like this, but in the snow in two weeks, you know, creating these moments, letting them come alive and getting authentic feeling. This is with like silky chickens um, with two little um, young uh, child models, but making sure if, if you are a child portrait photographer or you are a, um, you know, if you shoot portraits or weddings or if you shoot commercially, you got to cast top models. And I'm not talking about model mayhem or models that you know, or friends or your sister or whatever. I want you to cast ridiculously gorgeous over the top, top professional models. Now, if you don't have them in your area, because I hear this a lot, you know, hey, I live in, you know, rural Alabama or something like that, and I don't have access to these top models, totally fine. That's why we have these epic workshops that we hold all over the country and around the world. And we have them in amazing places where we have A-list top models at your fingertips, okay? We have models that are the creme de la creme de la creme from the biggest modeling agencies. And that makes all the difference when you're casting models from Elite, Wilhelmina, Next, Vision, Ford, um, you know, New York models, all these top agencies, when you have professional models, it changes the game, completely changes the perception of how your clients see you, whether you're into, um, even, you know, whether you're a portrait photographer or a commercial photographer, um, you know, they are going to be, your clients are going to be perceiving you not just based on your photography, but based on what's in your photography. And that's really, really important is understanding you know, okay, if I go and shoot epic content with top tier A-list models, is that going to change the game for me? You know, is that going to change? You know, for instance, we just did this in New York and we shot with supermodels from the Versace campaign. Um, we shot models from Vogue, Vanity Fair, Harper's Bazaar. Um, and we did the same thing at um, the Elite Masterclass that we have. 
And it just gives you that opportunity to shoot world-class top models. And even in a winter wonderland scenario, I wanna make sure that we have A-list models as well. And that's why I'm casting um, from modeling agencies to get that creme de la creme world-class look because that's what we're going for. We wanna make sure that we have unbelievable talent in our bodies of work, um, whether it's lifestyle, portrait, fashion, um, even if you're shooting um, food photography and you wanna incorporate lifestyle, you've got to have this stuff in your book. It is absolutely quintessential to have top models. And also ideally models that can move, models that can run around and have fun like this. Absolutely imperative to have this. Um, and by the way, guys, I, I'd like you to answer the, um, the, the poll right now. Um, and before I get to our questions and our panelists, um, how likely are you to enroll in any of our epic photographic experiences? Because I can guarantee you that coming to these workshops, literally you'll get more out of a four day workshop experience than you will at any four year university guaranteed in photography. I also can guarantee you that you will shoot the greatest photographic images of your career at the workshop. And that's a bold statement, but after 12 years of doing this and 135 workshops, I can tell you what, that every each and every workshop massively outdoes everything else in each photographer's portfolio um, that has come before. It completely transforms them. And by the way, now that you were talking about that, I'd like to bring on um, the great Remy Vermigulo uh, because she's amazing um, attendee. And she lives in a winter wonderland area. She lives in Colorado. And she's actually going to be um, coming to um, this amazing uh, upcoming workshop in two weeks. And Rainy, um, I'd love to hear from you if you want to jump on. Rainy, you're in Colorado. And I'm sure that you do photo shoots outside at some point in the winter wonderland. Um, can you tell me like, how important it is for you when contacting major clients to have really fantastic imagery in your portfolio and how you're able to create that imagery, um, whether it's through the workshops with us or elsewhere, um, what was able to kind of like allow you to catapult to that next level? Um, hi guys. So, okay, there were more than one, there was more than one question there, so. Well, well first uh, of all, <laughs> tell us about you know, what you do, what type of photography do you do, Ramey? And, um, and what website can we show everybody as your work? Okay, so I do lifestyle branding photography in Parker, Colorado. And my website is RameyRue.com. So R-A-E-M-I-R-U-E.com. I do a lot of food. I work with a lot of restaurants, hotels. Um, like that so pretty much any kind any business all businesses have they need images period so every business has a website at this point and i um and you live in parker colorado right yeah parker just outside of denver excellent so in these images right here um tell me about these so i uh oh my gosh I haven't looked at those in a little bit. I love them so much. <laughs> <laughs> so these images were taken, uh, well, the ones that I'm looking at right now, they were taken at a Polish princess's castle in Chicago at a workshop. Um, the theme was Mad Men and the, they, um, God, they were just the whole styling of the thing the interiors of this of this palace just was really unbelievable. As a matter of fact, I have had people contact me, find me off of Google, had gone to my website, seen these images and say, um, I want stuff like this because I love the image of the girl in the gold dress at the piano. I've, I've booked jobs because of these. So people love these images and I'm super proud of them. Yeah, and you did this at the photography workshop series Chicago. Yeah. You did this whole Mad Men story, which we have coming up again this year. Um, we do this once a year. Um, also this, these were shot with me, um, I believe in front of my house in Hermosa Beach. Um, I think this was part of like a lifestyle workshop um, that we did uh, where, you know, I absolutely love this sequence right here. Um, and you, you obviously shot this really cool kind of behind the scenes of us filming video there. Um, but, uh, you know, gorgeous, gorgeous work. 
Um, and it looks like, and I think this was uh, in maybe San Diego. Yeah, I think that was San Diego. Yeah, and this to me, Ramey, this is like where the direction's going because I know you do a lot of resort and restaurant and stuff like that. And I think that stuff like this is right in line with the direction of where you want to go, right? So I'll tell you, one of the things that I've really gotten through taking the workshops is that people, so my business three years through four years ago transitioned from uh, don't say no to anything, newborns, weddings, seniors, and I was just over it and I needed a different direction. And that's what I've gotten out of these workshops is the, a really a focused direction. And my passion is photographing businesses product and lifestyle at this at simultaneously because businesses when a bit business has a picture of a product what sells it even better is people interacting with the product and people having fun with the product so say this image could be used as a marketing piece for a resort or a spa or i don't know what but people like to see people interacting with their product and having fun and that's what these images give me to show, to show businesses. Excellent. So you've got content to show businesses and it sounds, because when I first met you, you were taking just about anything and you were not charging very much for your photography, but it seems like that has changed. It sounds like, you know, you've since landed like a $50,000 ongoing opportunity um, that kind of has kept you doing well during COVID. You've also been able to, um, land uh you know other opportunities in the whole like food restaurant you know hospitality kind of sector um you know and and you're coming to the epic winter wonderland workshop coming up this week or in like yes, two weeks so I am super so now stoked. we have all this great stuff you've attended denver with i'm sorry i think this is dallas with us you've done san yeah. diego um you've done um newport beach i believe you've done los angeles with me um you've uh you know you've you've you know, traveled around and done some of this epic content. These are all at workshops with top models, but now we can bring it back home and shoot this winter wonderland. And I think that's really going to help complete the body of work because now it shows more of a national brand where it's like, you've got the winter, you've got the California, you've got mm -hmm. the, you know, the different vibes and energy here. Yes. I love this. I love this. So I feel like, um, you know, this is really going in that direction and I'm excited for you, Ramey. So um, I did- I mean, I'll just say, Kevin, I'll, I'll just say, um, I, in the last three years in working with you and taking the workshops, my photography and my self-confidence and my business skills have, I've leveled up 10 times at least. So I'm just, I'm, really thankful for that and i'm passionate about the workshops <laughs> well i love to hear I that really i just so. get fired up I, I get fired up being with people in the same industry having the same passion as i do leveling up their own business it just gives me total passion i love that i, well, I love to hear that and thank you so much because in the last three years has been magical and i'm so excited because when i get to see content like we just looked at it completely blows my mind because wow, Ramey, you really took it up to another level. And you're a talented photographer already, but just giving you the opportunity to develop production at this level of production quality, that's what gets me excited. Because getting Ramey in front of this kind of production, it really puts her up to another echelon. Um, and, and that gets me excited. So what I do want to see going forward, Ramey, is I want to I want you to segment these brands. Um, because you have lifestyle and you have fashion. Um, and then you've got some stuff at the very end that's a little bit um, uh, unrelated, like like this. So I would say I would separate stuff like this and this. And then like, you know, but the rest of these things, I keep this lifestyle as one really strong, cohesive lifestyle brand. Uh -huh. And then have a separate fashion brand up here at the top. Okay. Yeah. I think that that would look really strong. Um, and your content looks great. I love the layout and everything, but Ramey, you have just gone like light years in your photography. And I know that you also shoot, um, you know, uh, food photography. I mean, that's, that's what you're kind of known for, right? At this point, yeah, I didn't really, I wasn't planning on going that direction, but all of a sudden all these restaurants started reaching out to me and I kind of went that direction, yeah. <laughs> got it, got it, okay. Well, you know, I think that's wonderful. I also think that what I would love to see from you is content like this 
where it's an interaction between lifestyle and food. And this whole like farm fresh, you know, out, you know, out in the farm, you know, and it feels as authentic and organic and it's fun and it's energizing and lifestyle all combined simultaneously. This is the kind of stuff that I'd love to see next as well from you. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. And this is like what we're going to be doing in Newport, you know, sequences like this with strawberries and having this kind of stuff, like basically incorporating for any of you guys out here are food photographers. This is the kind of stuff that's hot right now shooting content with like the the food the food product and like the natural um ingredients of food and models and having the lifestyle connection this is huge this is absolutely huge and this is this would be another thing that i think the interaction between lifestyle and food would be huge for you it's going to be epic so Rami, thank you so much i really appreciate it i think that you are uh, a really great um you know symbol of what can happen and that success. And it's cool because Rami, didn't you just contact me a couple of days ago about bidding on a campaign, right? And yeah. you know, when we're talking about strategy and usage rights and creative fees, and we never used to have that conversation three years ago, did we? No. <laughs> but now we are. So it's it that makes me happy that you've got opportunities galore. So Rami, thank you so much. I, I really You're appreciate welcome. it. My pleasure. Um, and uh, you know, and if you could just maybe tell our audience here you know, what do you think would be the best thing that they can gain uh, from attending one of our epic photographic experiences? Um, gosh, confidence for one, um, the ability to put together a shoot on a whole nother level than what you've ever done before. And um, content, content is huge. And it is really tough to put together scenes um, in the way that Kevin puts together these scenes so that you can get content for, for your book and then show. And then it commands more money. It commands, um, well, more money. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I That's love all. it. Well, I, I think the confidence is probably one of the biggest things that I saw you grow and I, and I see a lot with our photographers is the level of confidence. So I, I'm really proud of you. And, I, and I'm gonna keep seeing it growing and you and I are gonna have a blast in two weeks up in Colorado yes. together. It's gonna to be so much fun. Can't wait. Awesome, all right. Well, take care, Ramey. Thank you so much. Um, and, I, uh, and I'd love to bring on our next panelist. I also would um, you know, love to answer um, any of your guys' questions. So um, you know, I see that um, uh, we have a, um, we had a good question and I know, you know Priscilla's been answering some of these, but from Rachel Hoops, is today's webinar beneficial for someone based in Palm Springs? Um, I thought posing would be a topic. Yeah, absolutely. And we did go over posing. Um, I think that, um, you know, uh, anybody that ha lives in a place like Palm Springs, which is a desert area in Southern California, um, could badly use some content from Winter Wonderland, Rachel. I think that um, that way it shows you're more of a national brand. And when it goes into when you are shooting portraiture, for instance, um, in a Winter Wonderland scenario, it's going to be really important in my my feeling is that not just creating a <laughs> sterile shot, but creating a moment and letting the models get into an action sequence and creating a moment, allowing it to unfold and then photographing it so you get that authenticity, just like we've been looking at. So what I'm looking for is that authentic moment that's captured, Rachel. And that, that's, I think, what would be really, really beneficial for you. Um, so uh, excellent. Now, um, all right, uh, we had a few other questions here. Um, OK. Uh, Sonia Zurek asks, um, if you enjoy various photography areas such as fashion, food resort, and wedding photography, should you have a separate website for each body of work? And you know what? Um, absolutely. Just like we talked about with, um, with Ramey, um, I think that you know, she's trying to do a lot of different things on one website. Um, I think sometimes it's stronger to have separate bodies of work. That way it's all completely segmented into different brands. Um, so I think that um, that's totally okay and it's even encouraged that way that each client knows that you just you're just an expert in that one thing rather than a jack of all trades. And I do think that that's valuable. So um, Sonia, I would strongly recommend that and but you got to make sure that each brand that you have is world class. Each brand that you have is completely over the top and spectacular. you know so if you are going to be going to um, for instance, you know just take for instance, um, you know, if you look at my brands uh, in, in photography, 
Um, you know, I know many of you guys probably know my work, uh, but if you look at my brand, you know, this is my fashion brand, right? So this is a website separate. Um, then you go to, um, this is my lifestyle brand. This is my television brand, you know, with my uh, TV show projects. So, you know, we have different brands that we actually incorporate. So I think it's important for each and every one of you to have these different brands as well. And I think that it's important not to just pigeonhole yourself as this jack of all trades, but be able to be very, very specific about one thing that you do really well. So some clients think that I'm just this expert in travel and I, because I'm a TV host and I'm a director of the TV show, Great Escapes that aired on NBC and the CW. And it actually happens to be coming back into syndication on CBS this fall, which I'm excited about. And we might even um, be able to get a second season, which would be amazing. Um, but uh, I think that, you know, this is one of my brands. But then I also portray different brands. You know, I have a brand that is my fashion photography. I have a brand that is my lifestyle photography. Um, I have a brand um, that is my French dream castle that I just bought this 49 room castle um, in France that is pretty mind blowing. So, um, you know, I have these different brands that I offer and I think that each one of them needs to be separated. I think each one of them needs to be a separate individual brand and I'd recommend you doing that as well. And especially these days, you guys, because as photographers and directors, we need to make sure that each and every one um, of our clients see us not only as an image maker, but they also see us as, you know, essentially a brand. You know, they are seeing what we do, who we are, and it's, it's, we're bringing something to the table that is unique and special. And I want to make sure that you guys understand that it's not just about your photography anymore. They're buying you. They're buying you. And I think that's really, really important to realize that. And I, so I want you guys to, to realize that like, if you are being hired on a job and, you know, and especially if it's, you know, and it, whether it's a con commercial job or a um, consumer job, I think it's important to make sure that you are selling your brand. Just like this, this is the 49 room, 13th century, uh, 40,000 square foot castle that I just bought um, in France, in Massillon Combray, which we, ha it's, we happen to be shooting there in the snow um, in next month. And, um, and also uh, we're gonna be, um, in this summer, we're gonna be directing a absolutely epic um, high-end fashion photography workshop with supermodels from Paris at this castle um, in late August and September. So if you guys are interested in that, it's a five day experience, four days of massive scale photographic production, and you get to stay at the castle. This is an epic 13th century castle um, that is pretty incredible, but I have these different brands. So that's why I wanted to showcase to you guys, each and every one of you needs a separate brand as well and a different website. So excellent question, Sonia. I really appreciate it. That's an excellent one. Um, okay, so I have another question from Thomas Vasas. Um, I live in Columbus, Georgia, just south of Atlanta, Georgia. How would I get into shooting portrait fashion and lifestyle? There are some big companies like Aflac, um, Tissus, and Callaway Gardens in my area. How would I approach them or do I let them approach me? Okay, excellent question, Thomas. Excellent question. No one, and I mean nobody, is ever going to approach you, Thomas. That's just the way it is. Not in this day and age. Maybe 30 years ago in the photographic industry, but not this day and age. You have to approach everybody. Now, the question is how to approach them, what do we need to do, and what do we need once we approach them to look into your work? So extremely important, Thomas, to build a world-class portfolio. And if you haven't done it already, I encourage you to set up a, um, click on that link in the chat and set up a um, photographic um, consult with one of our strategists because they can talk to you about that and give you some guidance uh, personally on shooting portrait fashion and lifestyle, how to build those brands and how to land those clients. Um, but also, um, I highly, highly recommend, um, Thomas, not only you develop your body of work, but you also attend our epic marketing for photographers workshop. This is going to be, it, it, we, we're, we've only done it once in the last year. Um, this is our second one. It's going to be this Saturday, February 27th, and it's all on Zoom. And it's only $12.95, but it's a six hour intensive about marketing yourself as a photographer, not sitting down and letting the phone ring, which it never will from clients, but actually reaching out to those clients and getting clients to book you. Okay. So it's going to be a super intensive one. 
I'm going to be bringing in some of the most expert panelists in the industry, um, such as uh, an expert Michael Sterling, who is like a guru in photography marketing. Literally, that's all he does is markets photographers. Um, and he's done my marketing for the last few years. Um, he's an absolute expert with reaching out to people on LinkedIn. He's an absolute genius when it comes to that. Um, he's going to be one of our expert panelists. Um, we're also going to have the great JP Reps, the owner of JP Reps, George Perez. He's a top celebrity photographer agent. Um, he represents some of the most famous photographers in the world. Um, he's going to be one of our panelists as well. So I'm really excited about that. He's going to be giving a lot of amazing guidance. Um, some of you have also met him in person at the physical workshops at the masterclass. Um, and uh, we also um, even have um, the great um, Jay Foster, 46 Pictures, uh, who um, was um, uh, not only um, the agent for Peggy Sirota, one of the most famous photographers in the world, uh, but also had been married to her for like 15, 20 years and was her agent and booked her a lot of big campaigns that she did for Apple. And um, she shot for all kinds of major, major, major brands and big time celebrities, Vogue, Vanity Fair, Harper's Bazaar, Esquire and stuff like that. Um, and uh, this is also going to be one of our panelists, the agent that um, really, you know, took Pe Peggy Sirota to a really high level. So um, Jay Foster at 46 Pictures. So I would highly recommend, Thomas, you attend that. It's $12.95, but for webinar attendees, um, we're giving a $300 discount. This is the last chance to enroll in this workshop because it's this Saturday um, and it's all on Zoom. Um, but click in the link that we have um, on the, in the chat because that will, um, you can go ahead and sign up right now um, and save your spot for that. This is a very, very popular marketing workshop. Um, I'm really excited about it. And I think that um, uh, it's a no brainer. Now, the other cool thing about this, Thomas, is that in addition to learning all aspects of how to market yourself in 2021 and to position yourself to be the most successful photographer you can be in 2022, is that the entire investment, the entire um, you know, $1,000 investment is 100% a credit towards any four day workshop. So effectively, if you're going to take any four day workshop, which most of you guys are going to, um, it basically is going to pay for itself. So it's going to be free. So that thousand dollars is fully credited towards any four day workshop for 2021 or 2022. You enroll by the February 28th. But those of you guys who are on this webinar right now and have signed up for the marketing for photographers workshop this Saturday, just remember that you have to use it by the 28th. So by Sunday, um, it's and otherwise after that, it's not going to count as a credit towards any future workshop. So this is the deadline this week. So make sure to sign up for their four day workshop already. Um, make sure to get involved with that. And what that means is, um, you know, even if you have to set up an installment plan, um, we do offer that and we can set up installment plans or whatever, no big deal. Uh, but we just strongly encourage it. And that's why we're doing this marketing workshop is Thomas, it's to, just for photographers like you that really want to take it up to the next level develop your portfolio, but also learn how to market it. And that's why we think marketing is so important. We're effectively giving this away as 100% credit towards a physical workshop, which we've never done that before, but I think it's really important. So, um, the, you know, join me and all these amazing experts from 46 Pictures, um, who represented, you know, this photographer, uh, Peggy Sirota, uh, who also represented me, um, as well as um, J, um, uh, JP Reps, who was also my agent for three years, um, who's one of the biggest celebrity photography agents in the world, as well as uh, Michael Sterling, the expert that um, is, uh, he's an expert on marketing. So highly, highly recommend it, guys. Um, it's going to be an amazing experience. And yeah, Linda Bar Barrett, um, if you sign up for the workshop this weekend, you get a full $1,000 credit um, for it. So basically that $1,000 that you pay for the, um, you know, for the enrollment in the marketing workshop is 100% credit towards any four-day workshop that we have. So that way, um, it's, uh, it, it's a no-brainer. And you can sign up for, you know, like many of you guys are signing up for the marketing workshop and then using that thousand dollars towards the Denver workshop or towards the Newport workshop or towards the masterclass or Vegas or Miami or whatever workshop works best for you. So um, it's a really good opportunity, you guys, to learn about marketing and develop your, um, your uh, body of work by attending the full scale workshop. So um, please do that. Um, also, um, I think uh, um, if you guys have any other questions, Definitely ask it in the Q&A, but also make sure to set up a meeting 
with a dedicated one-on-one -on -one with one of our photographic consultants, because I think that'll be key. So I'd like to bring on um, uh, some other panelists right now. Um, and uh, I'd like to um, get to um, the great uh, Daniel Rothschild. Now, Dan um, has been one of my absolute trusted uh, photographic consultants. Dan is an absolute genius as a coach. He coaches photographers and he guides photographers on essentially transforming their mindsets, just like Ramey. Dan actually works with Ramey. Um, and uh, you saw how Ramey built confidence and she kind of grew not only in confidence, quality of her photography, and has made significantly more money. And Dan, can you talk a little bit about that, about mindset of photographers and, you know, and, and how that's important in transforming them? And, um, and then you know, anything else that you think that's gonna relate towards um, the, the winter wonderland um, photography and why that's important? Well, absolutely, Kevin. First of all, thanks uh, for having me here and welcome everybody. Um, so I'm going to touch base on something you already spoke about uh, somewhat, but I want to go into a little bit more detail, which in an area that I think um, is really important from all the work I do in, with photographers. So obviously, if you've seen webinar before, one of my running themes um, is think success uh, to be able to make success. Now, how do we actually put this into action and begin uh, making this real? So you brought up national branding. It is really important and it's helpful in many ways. And it's easier uh, to begin and to make than we might think. Now, photographers believe, um, you know, it, it, it live in smaller cities, um, uh, based in smaller cities that are less, what they believe is less happening, like, um, you know, than a big city like Los Angeles or New York or Miami. But if they live in smaller cities, um, they, you know, how do they, how do they get out of that uh, niche you mentioned? And so um, do they, you know, can they? Absolutely. Now, it's greatly helpful um, to create your image and your brand as a national brand. You brought it up and it's, it's really important. Now, some of the benefits of a national brand uh, image would be larger clientele pool, which equals more jobs, more job availability, um, more interest in you and your photography if you're a national brand. Obviously, higher pay per photo shoot. Um, clients that have um, larger budgets to work with are obviously better for us. To, you know, we all want that so they can pay well and they have plenty of money to work with. Um, the referrals. So when you're at a higher level, a national brand level, your referrals are going to be the same clientele paying at a similar level. <clears throat> what happens sometimes in a smaller location, smaller town, or getting stuck in just doing local is your referrals are then that local, smaller paying, lower paying clientele. Now, when you're at a national brand, uh, you're, you're branding yourself nationally and you're, you're bigger in that sense. There's a snowball effect with your resume um, at that level. Once you're there and it's happening, the, the clients come to you better, more easily, and the pay is better. So it kind of snowballs in a really wonderful way. So, um, you know, branding uh, stronger and larger is uh, so much um, more useful to us uh, than the local can be. Now, of course, I hear you all, I can read minds. The big question and the answer is, well, how do I do this? So, um, you know, Kevin, you brought up a good point. One of the, the areas is you want to have two or three locations nationwide that you show you are based in and work from. Now, it is an example, it could be Los Angeles, it could be New York, it could be Miami. Um, the second thing is um, you wanna have, you know, two or three phone numbers with those locations using their area codes. So it's, it's really simple. What uh, many have not necessarily considered is there's a simple tool to use that's inexpensive. It's called a virtual executive suite. Um, I've used them for years. Um, they're great. Um, so you can get your phone numbers 
in those cities. They're all over the country, big cities. You get a phone number from there. You have an address if they want to mail you something or if they want to meet you there. It gives you a meeting place whenever you need it. Uh, they offer secretarial and mail services and um, anything you would ever need um, from as, as if having your own office. Um, and I'm, I'm not here to promote this specific company, but it's just an example you could go look up to see what I'm talking about. Like Regus, R-E-G-U-S is a company. I've actually personally used them over the years. They're great and they offer every and anything to, you could just have an address, you know, you could have just a phone number. You can have someone answering the phone live. I'm answering with your company name and you, uh, you know, you, uh, can have things mailed there. You can meet with clients there. So, um, so you pay for what you need and use and it's inexpensive for what you're gonna get. So this is another tool, how to brand yourself nationally strongly. Now, uh, the next thing is you place all this nationwide brand information on your website, your marketing materials, business cards, et cetera. And last, not something molecular, but you can then feel it, believe it, and be it mentally bigger than, you know, and I've spoken to so many photographers, oh, gosh, I'm in this small town, there's nothing happening, you know, I, I don't know how to get beyond this. You sitting right there can. These are the tools that you want to use to do that. Um, so, in a fun way, um, you've just grown uh, uh, to being a nationwide brand, at least the beginning, <laughs> uh, with a little strategy, low cost, and application of these uh, these things. Um, and Kevin, you had you had mentioned it. I don't know if there's any more to say, but um, maybe you you know you could share. You know, you did similar strategies years ago at the beginning of your career uh, when you lived in San Francisco. I don't know if there's any more to add to what I've just said, but. Absolutely. I think that's brilliant. I, and I think that it doesn't, you know, you could, you could set up a suite like that, or you can just simply get a Google voice number, which costs nothing. Um, but, uh, you know, it, but Dan, you definitely transform photographers, you know, visions and perspectives of what they can create. And I, that's why I, I think that you're so valuable. So I'd love for you guys to talk with Dan and to, you know, have a coaching session. Um, and, you know, guys also, you know, I, I'm putting in the, um, in the, in the chat here, an opportunity to set up a, you know, a free strategy session to talk with one of our photographic consultants like Dan or Priscilla or Kara or Sean, um, and I encourage it. Um, I'd love to, then thank you very much, Dan. I'd love to bring up Thanks, uh, one of the photographers that you do work with, um, very in depth, uh, with is, um, the great Nick Seth Smith. Now, Nick, you've attended the last two out of three workshops in a row with us. And you attended the Elite Masterclass, which we see that absolutely mind-blowing image behind you, which I got to see your portfolio um, in person. You had it all printed out. It was amazing. And it was literally the greatest fashion portfolio um, cover I'd ever seen. It was on this metal portfolio, which I know you're also a portfolio printer. Incredible. Um, but Nick, talk to me about your experience at the, the, at the lifestyle workshop that you attended last week. And what was that all about? And how did that improve your career? Sure. So, um, as you know, lifestyle is new for me and uh, it was uh, it's a voyage of discovery, but it's also just an amazing experience to go through. Um, I mean, these shoots are truly epic. I mean, you know, you've got, as you said, world class models, amazing couture, uh, just an incredible energy to the um, you know, to, to the workshop. So there's a real fun to it, but it's also very challenging. Uh, I'm you know much more of a traditionalist. I'm English, so I'm a little more reserved than uh, perhaps uh, some other photographers. And I'm used to shooting with a longer lens, doing portraits, weddings, uh, and so on. So shooting with a shorter lens, being closer in, really getting, uh, having to hype people up and get this energy out of the models and then capture it is a real challenge, but it's been incredibly exciting. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I've only just had a chance to start going through my workshop, uh, you know, my work from the workshop in the last day or so, but I'm really excited about the stuff that I caught. Unfortunately, I don't have anything to show in front of me yet, but I will do soon. And um, as soon as I do, it'll be, it'll be fun. Excellent. So was there a certain scene that just blew your mind or got you really, really excited, um, you know, when you were shooting? 
Oh, that's a tough one. I mean, they, you know, they, they were all such, as you said, the alpacas were definitely a challenge. They were nothing if not willful. And they're just constantly at it, trying to, you know, eat the clothes and so on. Um, I think the uh, the fields out, uh, you know, the shots out in the fields were, were really the best for me. I mean, the garden was amazing and the, the wardrobes, particularly shooting with the little kids was, was so much fun because, uh, you know, this little young girl in the front, she had so much energy and yet uh, she was frightened of the animals. So trying to get that balance between getting her engaged and, and really excited without having her sort of run away scr uh, screaming was, was just amazing. So that was a challenge. Um, but when we got out in the field, um, we got to really, uh, you know, tell a complete story that was that was just amazing it was really really cool uh and of course hannah sat behind her is, is phenomenal and she brings so much energy to the scene that uh, when you've got a model like that it really makes your life as a photographer and as a producer so uh, and a, you know as a director so much easier because she just has that 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 passion that that is is electric but uh yeah i mean this this scene and then the scene with the with the sugar cane just just incredible really really fun Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, so this is the scene you're talking about or the sequence when we're shooting out at the farms, yep. Tanaka, um, and creating this content with the horses and alpacas and all that. Exactly. The horses were a little less willful this time than they were in the, in the masterclass when one of them wanted to eat the dress. But uh, uh, the horses actually were incredible. And that the, the lady that wrangled them was just amazing. But it was nice that the models were comfortable on the horses. And so they, uh, they're, they're you know, uh, competent riders themselves. And that, that makes a huge difference. But even so, the, the telling that complete story, getting, uh, you know, getting something that is that captures the energy and shows um, no, a, a real story is, is phenomenal. So it was, it was amazing. A lot of fun. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. I feel like, you know, you've grown a lot too, Nick, from when I oh, started absolutely. with you to where you're at now. How do you feel like you've grown the most? Uh, mostly in um, just in, in the scale of productions, in the scale of the of uh, the shoots that I can do. Um, as you know, I, la I landed a big wedding off the um, uh, you know the work that we did in the LA workshop. Um, yeah, and how much are you making on that wedding? It was what was the number? It was a lot. Let, let's that's not it's a little too public a forum to tell that, but it was it was a healthy five figure um, you know uh, sum, shall we say? Yeah, five wedding. figure wedding off of uh, the images you attended. You know, you shot at the workshops. I mean, that's that's pretty that's a that's a big substantial opportunity yeah. and it's a big step up from what i've been making in the past so it was it was huge but it, it was but not just from the images, it was from the confidence that I got from those images of being able to take some risks and really take, uh, you know, do take some shots that I would not have normally have tried in the context of wedding. I might have done those in a, you know, in a fun shoot where you've got some latitude, but to do that with a paying client was a little scary. And the again, the confidence I gained from the from the workshops really, really helped me to do that. Excellent. The clients love it. They're, they're and, ecstatic. And Nick, you, you're not just becoming a stronger photographer. You're also becoming a director. And yeah. I, I got to see you direct some of these video sequences and you did an amazing job. And I feel like you're, you're becoming, you know, a storyteller. And that gets me really excited. So I love it, Nick. It's been fun. And uh, yeah, I mean, video is new for me. And so the whole concept of telling stories, and I've always done that with my photography, but to do that with moving images has been a real challenge. And definitely, again, watching, uh, you know, um, you know, w when you've got this incredible, uh, you know, sort of uh, operator with the Dan, uh, with the AK Red, seeing him operate, but seeing the way that he is just a tool for the director to, to guide, that was, uh, that was something new for me. And it's been a real learning experience. Um, so it's been really cool. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you, Nick. I, I, I always love working with you. You're an absolute superstar, great well, energy you. on set, and you're really professional with the models. Um, and it's what helps. I mean, it, telling these stories and creating these moments. Um, but I can't wait to see you again. We're going to be uh, working together at which upcoming experience? Miami. Miami, Miami Beach. Nice. Yep. So we're going to be coming down to Miami and shooting with supermodels in Miami Beach. And um, that's going to be a whole nother planet of just fun. So I'm, I'm really, really excited about that, Nick. Um, and Looking forward to it. Round out your body of work. You're gonna, you've got the Newport lifestyle. You've got the high fashion from the masterclass, also a lifestyle day at the masterclass. We're gonna get that resort lifestyle and swim in Miami. It's gonna be amazing. Um, okay, well, uh, thank you so much, Nick. It was such a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. You're a, a genius and I, I feel like um, I'm really grateful to have you involved with these experiences. Um, and I can't wait to see you in Miami. Well, it's a pleasure and thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Now, I'd love to um, invite uh, our next panelist on. I want to bring on um, the great Kara Katzen. So Kara is a photographer. She also works on my team. 
um, as a photographic consultant. And Kara, um, if you want to jump on, I, um, uh, I, I really am excited because Kara uh, lives in St. Louis. She shoots a lot of children. She shoots a lot of portrait photography. Um, and, uh, and Kara, you um, uh, had some really cool strategies that, um, uh, that I wanted you to showcase and discuss about like kind of some tips and tactics within the snow. Um, so um, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that and what's worked for you, what hasn't worked and kind of like, do you have any guidance for our photographers on winter wonderland and lifestyle and portrait photography? Happy to talk about it, happy to be here. Um, winter organically lends to adventure and spontaneity and with my line of work, um, that's certainly a key component in making magic happen. Um, for years and years, I kind of shied away from it. And like all of the photographers, when the weather got cold, I use it as an excuse to be on a hiatus or what have you. And, and I'm learning, I'm reorganizing, whatever. And I was really leaving a lot of money on the table. Um, I've kind of now got it to where when the snow falls, my clientele picks up the phone and actually calls me to book. Um, and the way I did that really was, first of all, to coach them on the benefits of winter photography. You can get out there and like Kevin said, create an action sequence, something as simple as building a snowman. And in a matter of a very short period of time, you've got a family really working for you where you're able to capture those detail shots. You're able to capture, you know, close up even you know, portraiture is beautiful in winter light. Um, I think that winter is kind of like nature's light room, so to speak. I find myself color correcting far less shooting in winter than when I'm shooting, you know, amidst green in the spring and the summer. So that part of it makes, um, you know, the workflow a lot easier for me. Um, you know, typically people would say, you know, oh, my kids, you know, they're going to be cold and whatnot. You know, whether you're working with a model or a child, um, the little tiny tips go a long way. You know, those little tiny hand warmers that you can buy. You know, pick up a pack of those at Costco or somewhere crazy, give them to your clients or to your models, put them in their gloves, in their shoes. They're going to work a lot harder for you out there without cold hands and feet. Um, I tend to work a lot faster in the snow. So I coach them that we are going to be quick. It's just going to be a lot of fun and really fast and just to get out there and have fun. And I stand back and let it unfold. Um, and I also incorporate little things. Um, you know, just little fun things like freezing bubbles, something that people just don't even really think about, um, but a simple recipe that's all over the internet. You can freeze bubbles um, very easily in 30 degree, 32 degrees or lower. And, um, and these are your images, right? Yes, kids love this, um, adults love this. And if you're in food photography or if you're in, um, you know, product or branding, Every time I make these, I'm always thinking about champagne. So somebody needs to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and how do we make these bubbles, Kara? Um, basically, it's, it's a recipe that's all over the internet, but it's basically warm water, um, sugar, or uh, like caro syrup. Some people put glycerin in it. Um, and you're just blowing bubbles like with a straw or with, you know, like a bubble blower. And they freeze just like that. So um, for me, it's just all about coaching your clients, making it a positive thing. Um, as a bonus, a lot of times I'm invited inside and then I get to see my clients' walls and I'm like envisioning with them ways that their beautiful winter white photography is going to fit into their home, you know, as a canvas. So that's an extra selling opportunity. So um, winter is nothing to be afraid of. Just strategize, get out there and shoot it. I love that. That's a brilliant idea. Nice little tip and um, tactic and strategy. And you shoot a lot of children and families yep. and portraiture, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, exclusively. Excellent, excellent. So how do you think the uh, the winter wonderland experience in Denver in two weeks is going to benefit um, photographers to develop their portrait and lifestyle photography? I think that there is going to be opportunity for all, um, no matter what genre you are in currently. I think that it's just going to be a mind blowing experience to get out there and just make make the magic you want to make. I mean, all the elements are there. It's going to be super exciting. And um, yeah, I can't wait. OK, cool, because you're going to be joining us there. Um, and uh, the people also Daniel Rothschild, who you just met, will be joining us on set. Um, I'll be there directing it. Um, and then the great Priscilla Evans is going to be joining us as well. So um, Priscilla, um, I'd love for you to jump on. Um, Priscilla is my production coordinator. And what I get excited about with um, Priscilla is that she not only is really great at coaching photographers and guiding photographers, but Priscilla also makes things happen. 
I mean, she has that special something where she's able to produce, bring on alpacas on set. Um, she was able to bring on horses, um, actually from two different horse companies. Obviously we had three horses on set. She was able to coordinate epic locations. She was able to coordinate like multi-million dollar mansion estates. Um, Priscilla is on top of it. And with all the production coordination and the details of the scale of production that, uh, that we put on with the workshop series, um, th this is something that Priscilla is an expert at. But Priscilla also is really fantastic at coaching photographers and guiding photographers. So Priscilla, do you have any advice um, for our photographers um, and guidance for them? Um, I, I think that this would be really helpful to hear. Yeah, I, uh, I love what, what Kara and Dan said as well. And um, especially, Kara, you were talking about strategies and strategizing. And I love when I'm you know, talking to my photographers to find out what their goals are and to help them strategize to achieve those goals. And I love strategies that have little shortcuts incorporated into them just to save you time, make those goals happen as fast as possible. So honestly, I think that this Denver workshop with the Winter Wonderland is genius for anyone whose goals out there right now are to get publications. And we haven't talked about this too much um, so far, but you know, a lot of the photographers I talk to, they're really hoping to get you know, a little bit more like noise around their brand. And part of that is getting published, but the publishing space can be pretty competitive and kind of brutal, especially if you're trying to get into it or get something published, but you've only got content from summer or a couple of like seasons that kind of reflect all the same. It's all warm weather kind of content because, you know, for a lot of the year, those magazines and the photo editors that you're talking to, they're, they're running off their editorial calendar. So in other words, like no matter how good they think your photography is, if you don't have content that matches the season that they're aiming to collect their publication and build their publication around, you're not going to get in. And it's also important to remember that even though it's, you know, winter right now, they were planning out this winter's editions of, you know, p content months ago. So in other words, the content you can shoot now can help to fill that kind of void in your own calendar if you've got some downtime or you're not really getting any noise around your brand for part of the year, um, you know, aiming now and planning this out for the following year and the following year's season. So I think that is, um, is really, really like crucial to be, and a lot of photographers miss out on that. And there's so many photographers out there that could get published if they just had, you know, the content in there that the magazines are looking for right now. So, you know, that's a great way to, to build it and, um, and to get more recognition around your brand. Excellent. So getting published now, you mentioned something about an editorial calendar. One way to mm -hmm. do that, um, there's a site called Ad Sprouts, and there's also you can look up each magazine and look them up. But another way to do that, guys, um, is to go into any Barnes and Nobles and even look into a um, uh, you know any magazine. And there's a um, uh, there's an area that uh, you can actually look up the photo editors, and you can also contact the, the or go on the website. And the website of each magazine has something um, where they have a media kit. You want to request the media kit. And if they don't have a media kit available, contact the magazine and they can tell you their editorial calendar. You just want to ask them that what that is. And that way they get the layout. So what Priscilla is talking about is the editorial calendar, the layout of like, hey, if the February, you know, yeah. editorial um, story, it's going to be a winter wonderland story. Um, we need to make sure that um, that that it's going to align with that February story because obviously we're not going to publish it for July or something like that. Um, but they're going to need content, and not a lot of people shoot it. Um, so Priscilla, talk to me a little bit about you know the, the the Winter Wonderland workshop specifically in Denver. How do you think the images from that, um, in addition to being published, but how do you think that's going to really help a photographer, you know, kind of catapult their career? Oh my gosh, if you're into resorts or if you're trying to go for the resort advertising space, health and wellness, which is huge right now coming out of COVID, I think it's also important to remember and, and try and identify which aspects, which genres of photography are going to be really big in the next year. And therefore, you know, try and think ahead, strategize, you know, what do I need to be able to hit that market at the time I want to? And if that market is sports and fitness, another huge one that's coming out of COVID because we're focusing on health and being as you know healthy and an outdoor lifestyle is of course you know a big focus there. Um, then planning it out now to have content now that you're going to be able to hit that market with later in the year is super key. So I would say um, the biggest ones would be resort, health, 
fitness, sports, sports lifestyle, sports um, fashion as well. Think Patagonia, North Face, um, Oakley, those kind of brands and, uh, and anything else that applies. Yeah, Excellent. lifestyle advertising is fantastic. It's always applicable to a lot. That's what I love about it is, you know, the images you use here and you see here, you can market this to pretty much anyone. And that's pretty cool because it means you've got a portfolio that is, you know, there's images in here that are timeless. There's images in here that are going to be really relevant to lots of different decision makers in the field. So you're getting a lot more potential like return on investment for what you're putting in. Absolutely. Uh, well, thank you, Priscilla. I think that you gave some great advice and I really appreciate it. And I know a lot of you guys have been sticking around here towards the end. Um, we have all these amazing panelists that have jumped on and, uh, and I really uh, appreciate that. And I appreciate their perspectives and guidance. And I can't wait to see um, what, uh, what we're going to create in Denver because it's going to be absolutely mind blowing. Um, the, uh, the Denver workshop is going to be, um, you know, one of the most epic like winter stories we've ever created. Um, and, uh, and I can't wait because each photographer is going to tell a story that's going to be fresh and it's going to be wintry and it's going to be in season. And it's something that's going to be extremely useful. And the reason we call this the photography workshop series, you guys, is because it's a series. And I think it's important, not just for our photography workshops, but also for you. It's important to have a series of productions and portfolio shoots in all different types of environments from summer to fall to um, winter to have different seasons, different looks, different ethnicities, different um, demographics, different age ranges, and also you know, to develop a body of work that looks national like we've talked about. And I think that that's the beauty of the winter wonderland experience is to appear national. It's absolutely critical. So. Um, you guys, I'm, I'm really, really excited. I'm really grateful for each and every one of you. Um, and uh, the, the whole aspects of developing um, a body of work that's national and it's right at your fingertips. I recommend if you guys haven't already, get involved in one of our experiences. The marketing workshop's a no brainer. It's a $300 discount if you enroll today. And um, so it's only $9.95 and it's gonna be super intense, a six hour intensive marketing. If you can't make it for some reason, you can watch it and rebroadcast. But remember that full thousand dollar enrollment is a full credit towards any four day workshop in um, 2021 or 2022 if you enroll by this week. So it's going to be a really, really fantastic opportunity, you guys. Um, and I can't wait to see each and every one of you guys there. So um, I, uh, I hope that some of this was helpful and you guys learned some strategies and tips and tactics about winter wonderland and how to photograph in a winter scenario. I love Kara's ideas um, on um, you know, creating the bubbles. I actually, we're definitely gonna be doing that in Colorado. Um, and I also love some of the aspects of incorporating animals like Priscilla did uh, with what we did um, with the alpacas and the horses and the silkies out in Newport. Um, just incorporating you know, some sort of interesting prop and some sort of interesting experience around the photo shoot to kind of give it a little special edge, a little something extra to give impact. And that's what we're going for, you guys. We're going for impact with our photography. That is absolutely critical. So I can't wait to see each and every one of you. Um, please go ahead and set up a personalized consult with one of our photographic consultants in the chat there. Um, also, I recommend if you guys are gonna sign up for that marketing workshop, um, please go ahead and go, do it now. It's in the chat. There's a, um, the, uh, um, the link on it is right in the chat right now, and you can get in there. And this is with the discounted rate, get $300 off. Um, so go ahead and sign up for that. And I can't wait to see you guys this Saturday. I know, you know, we have a big group coming and I can't wait to work with you all. It's going to be really incredible. It's going to be really intensive and it's going to really jumpstart your marketing for your photographic career this year. Um, and, um, and then for the rest of you guys, um, you know, the workshops, they're going to literally transform your career and transform your confidence in your photographic vision, branding, and totally take you to the next level. Take care, guys. And I cannot wait to see what happens in 2021.